I think this is going to the airport is because I kept on asking the conductor, airport, airport, and he was like, which I think means yes. So we'll see if we make it to the airport. Well, looks like we're at the airport. So what good would an Indian adventure be without some kind of misadventure? Now that we've missed our train yesterday, it's time to find out if we can possibly afford any plane tickets to get us to Mumbai today. Because if we don't, we don't get to go home to Canada. Considering after missing our train, we were in a bit of a panic as to how we were getting home, the first and only option was really to go to the airport and see whether we could buy any tickets. We got here. Luckily, they have all their uh, domestic air ticketing counters here. The only one that was here last night was Spice Jeff. Thankfully, they were here. We talked to them, though. We wanted to buy tickets last night, but for some reason, their systems were down, so they couldn't do a cash transaction, which was annoying. And they only had two tickets left. So, we're back here this morning, before Spice Jet's even here, apparently, and we're hoping that those two tickets are still available. Wow. That paid off. Gotta say, last night, our biggest concern was not finding a flight, and our second biggest concern was paying through the nose for the exactly. flight. We were being getting quotes like 18,000 rupees for both of us. It was out of control. But Spice Jet came in pretty handy. Now, last night we heard that there was an airport fair for people who came and bought flights the day of the flight. Spice Jet seems to be the only carrier that does this. Now, we got here and we didn't even have to ask for it. We were able to get two tickets for a ridiculously good price. I'm not quite sure how, but we got two tickets for 5,000 rupees, which basically means we're both flying to Mumbai for 50 bucks each. In that's crazy! It is officially the cheapest flight we have gotten anywhere in the country, and we bought it the day of. And 5,000 rupees! It's time to go shopping. So we're standing at a sweet shop. This is something that you'll find quite commonly throughout every city in India. That might also account for why India has one of the highest diabetes rates in the world. Regardless though, the sweets look awesome. I just don't know what anything is. What is it? I don't know what that is. Beta. Smells good. So this melts in your mouth like shortbread. Kind of powdery but soft. And this one's just like chewing really, really tiny curds that are sweet. Back home, we have something called a bronzer. It essentially makes you look tanned and healthy and glowing all year round, even through the winter when there is no sun to go tanning. Now, in India, they have something called a winter fairness cream, which does the complete opposite. It makes you look lighter and makes you more beautiful by society standards. So we decided to come here to a druggist and chemist to figure out what kind of different winter fairness creams we could find. And the selection is massive. Luckily we narrowed it down to about two different products that we'll be taking home with us and I'll be giving it to my mom and my aunt too, since they're both Korean and Koreans are also obsessed with being as white as possible. And we'll see which one works out better. But either way, it is fascinating to see the difference in the way North America absolutely embraces being dark and tan and Asia absolutely embraces being as white as possible. Playing bangles, specifically to match the sari that I bought and I have this gorgeous dress that Gull made me back home and then I'm just getting colors that I like that they're gorgeous. I've learned the different traditional Indian colors first of all, like this indigo, it is very Indian. But aside from that, I've learned how to take simply rolls of bangles and how to divide them and make different patterns that make it look like a gorgeous sleeve of bracelet. Well, the original plan was to buy luggage in Mumbai, but with the sheer volume of bangles that she's managed to find here, it may have changed to buying it and going. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Now you're, you're counting those giant ones as one as well? Uh, I guess they're for each wrist. Okay, okay. Fine, I'll narrow it down, I'll narrow it down, calm down. So, we have a problem. Turns out I've got way too many bangles to fit in our bags. So I'm actually trying to wear as many of them as will possibly fit on my arm. 
so that we can take it back to Dubai and ultimately bring it back to Canada. This is as far down my arm that this bangle sleeve will go because of all the chicken on my arm. But those Indian girls that have like arms like this, you could probably wear it up to your elbows. If there's one thing to be proud of on this trip, it's the fact that at the beginning, this backpack and this bag fit together. And now, three and a half weeks later, it still works. I am the perennial optimist, but now that we're here and getting on the plane, I think we might actually be able to get home to Canada. Mumbai has more than 13 million people in it, and over half of those people live in the slums. Now we had only flown in and out of Mumbai at night before today, so we had never noticed that the entire circumference of the airport is surrounded by slums. There's a restaurant that we've been dying to go to every time we're here in Mumbai. It has southern Indian food, and now that we've been to the south, we're kind of craving some more. So we're going to see if we can make it. We're having our second dinner in two nights at a restaurant without a menu. We just finished something called idli, which is little timbits of rice flour, and then it has some sauce on it with coconut chutney. It was pretty good. This is the next dish that we ordered. It's a idli, which is it looks like a sort of flatbread made out of rice flour. And basically, same thing, you just dip it in the stuff. Definitely the type of place where you don't even need it because you only eat your hands. We must really be enjoying this more than we realize because I keep forgetting to film the food um, until we've taken a bunch of bites out of it. So my apologies. So our third dish this evening is something called a tomato onion. It sounds like the lady said octagon. I'm sure that's not what it actually is, but essentially it seems to be like an Indian pizza. It's got tomatoes, onions, cilantro, and it's all kind of sprinkled on top of that same rice flour, except this time it's a little bit thicker, like a pancake. All in all, it's pretty good. Well, dinner at Ramashray was awesome. When we read Southern, we thought, oh, it'll be like Kerala, but actually, it was more like Chennai, which was a place we didn't get to go to. So it was a nice opportunity to eat something a little bit different. We're in Bandra and we're hearing Alanis Morissette. You might remember Paresh and Vixter from our Brain Masala party in Mumbai. And now we've managed to find ourselves meeting up with them here again in Mumbai. But now we're in Bandra and it's a little more about the drinking and less about the eating. It's our pre-flying meal. But we're having uh, tandoori. Just anything cooked in that tandoori oven. Good. It's a lot of red. <laughs> it's all red. Red tandoorinas. Yeah. In all the time we've been in India, somehow we've not tried fish tandoori. But wow, it is really good. This is our very last auto rickshaw ride in India. We're on our way to the airport. It's going to be a pretty intense ride. Like, this is the longest distance we're riding in an auto rickshaw, I think, from Bandra to Pamela Parley. It'll be fun. I hope we go on the highway. <laughs> We're flying Swiss Air, which, generally speaking, is a great airline from everything I've heard, but right now we've gotten to the check-in counter and we're being told that our flights were booked for another day, even though we've been given an itinerary from Swiss Air clearly saying that they were booked for right now. So we have 40 minutes to get on a plane, they're still calling someone and at this point, it's anyone's guess as to whether we're getting home. So, earlier today when we were getting on that spice jet plane and I said, yeah, we're getting to Canada, I didn't think Swiss Air would screw it up this bad. 